All right, as you can see here, we have a Fanatec box. Now I have been, or Fanatic, however you, however you say it, um, I've been pretty predominantly Thrustmaster in my rig. Uh, I haven't really have used anything else besides Thrustmaster. I started off with the T100, and now I have the Thrustmaster TX. I've had a few wheels. I've kind of ended on the uh, the Alcantara edition of their wheels, and I have the T3PA Pro pedals with some mods to the brake. You probably are already aware of that. So this is gonna be my first Fanatic um, item that I've actually gotten. I've, I've been staring at this for a while and um, I picked it up on the Black Friday deal that they had. They had a Black Friday deal that the hand brake was 75 bucks in America and it came with the USB adapter for free. So I, I couldn't turn it down at that point. Um, but how do you mount that to a play seat challenge? The play seat challenge is essentially a lawn chair that folds up and is made to just be folded up and put away when you're not using it. Um, if you have seen my rig in the past, uh, it's kind of destroyed now, but this was my center console. I used to have my, um, my Thrustmaster TH-8A shifter actually right in here. This is my button box that I'm going to fit onto my rig, and this was my DIY handbrake. I was actually very proud of this handbrake because, um, well, it felt pretty darn good. It uses RC car shocks, two of them, to kind of give you that hydraulic feel. The only problem is, is actually what it's based off of. It's based off a of flight stick, and the flight stick over time just started becoming really erratic and not really accurate. It wasn't necessarily, because it was a DIY design, um, I picked up the, the flight stick itself, at, um, at a thrift store, so it wasn't like a Logitech or anything like that. It was just a cheap one that I found. And over time, I just had to keep calibrating it. Every time I went in, calibrate it, and sometimes in the middle of the title, whatever it was, whether it was a Seto Corsa, I was drifting, anything like that, um, it would just lose calibration right in the middle of it. So, kind of had to get away from that a little bit. Um, couldn't really enjoy titles like Dirt Rally too much. Although there is a weird issue with Dirt Rally, I'll go over it a little bit later. Um, but let's go to the rig and I'll show you exactly what I did and how I did it. Welcome to RTA Motorsports. So I've seen on a lot of videos, they mount the TH-8A shifter using RAM mounts. Now what RAM mounts are, um, it, RAM mount is a company that makes mounts for GPS systems, phones, anything that you can mount onto a vehicle for motorcycles, for marine use, etc. Now their mounts are pretty much all aluminum in construction. They are very strong and they are very simple in their design. They're kind of expensive and that's the only downside that I was able to really find with these. So what I did was I picked up a round mount for here and it has the two inch square. So I had to actually, on this side, you can see the U-bolt. I put a little bit of double-sided tape in there just to protect the rig from getting scratched. It comes with this bushing here to kind of help grip onto the bar. This here is actually the twist lever to bring down the entire top. So you could open that lock and the entire top of the rig will swing away. Something I wasn't actually able to do in my old setup because I had that DIY console in the way. So you couldn't actually step into the rig kind of rendering this whole part of the play seat challenge useless. So the U-bolt goes there with the bushing and you can see the rest of the RAM mount actually here. This is the actual main clamp. RAM mounts mainly use a ball and socket construction. You can see down there, well kind of, this is the ball for this piece here. There's another ball for the mount here. And these are all interchangeable. You could put whatever mount piece you want onto your RAM mount if you uh, need it for a different reason. And this is the main clamping mechanism. You just twist to lock it it's extremely strong. On this side here, you can see the actual plate itself. I had to drill out 
some holes to fit the M6 bolts into there. So the plate came with four bolts. It's a, I believe it's the two inch square plate, two inch square mount. And I just basically widened out the holes that were already in the corner to accept the M6. This is only mounted with two bolts at the present time, but it seems to be strong enough. One thing I will say though, is I would not use anything heavier or stronger than the TH8A. There is a little bit of motion in it, but it's not too bad at all. And when you're racing, you don't notice that. Definitely acceptable to me for a compact rig, one that is meant to fold and be put away. Um, it definitely works well for me and it holds its place really well. I mean, the entire rig moves, so, you know. Now to go into how I mounted the Club Sport handbrake. The Club Sport handbrake is a, it's a pretty interesting piece. I absolutely love it. I love how hard it is to actually actuate the handbrake itself, um, kind of, immerses you a little bit more into the titles that you're using it with. The downside is because it's so hard to actuate, a single ram mount is not strong enough. Now you can see here, I have the same ram mount that I've utilized for my TH8A also mounted to this. And you can see I had to kind of drill out the holes a little bit to accept the M6 to mount it on the back side. And you can see that the torque from me having to pull this down is kind of pulling on the ram mount a little bit. The unfortunate side is where it's actually pulling on the ram mount is where the U-bolt is clamped onto the rig itself. Now it always seems to kind of spring back and over time, especially when drifting or rallying, when you're using the handbrake a lot, I do not notice that it changes position dramatically from the beginning to the end of the session. It seems to be in the same place, which is fine by me. So it does move a little bit, just like the TH8A. The only thing is, don't mind this hole. I was actually gonna mount this completely different. I ended up having to drill out a hole here, put a really long M6 into the back lower corner there. Reason being, the Club Sport handbrake, like I said, is pretty firm, pretty hard to actuate. So when you actuate it, having just the ram mount on the back top, when you pull it, you'll actually pull the, the whole handbrake downward. I did notice that if you, on the bottom here, just mount it so that the bottom of the handbrake is resting on this actual clamp, you could utilize it without drilling into your rig at all except you might get a little side to side sway on the bottom here. And the actual plug for it, where it goes into the adapter to connect to your PC is on the bottom here. So you don't want it to swing side to side and risk damaging the port, especially if you're just buying your handbrake. Um, that, that would stink to kind of damage the USB port on your brand new item. So I wanted to affix it in a way that would be a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more permanent. And you can see here on the side view, it does move a little bit, but it's not too bad at all. So to get in and out of the rig, I just loosen this a little bit here. Then I'm able to twist this mechanism and lift the wheel up out of the way, get in and out of the rig just fine. All right, so don't mind the VR hair. I was making the next video that's gonna be coming out. Um, where I give you my first thoughts and impressions on my uh, club sport handbrake, especially set up that sort of way. Um, as far as how everything is laid out though, I do gotta say I love how everything is laid out. It feels much like a professional rig. It feels like everything should have been there um, from where when it came from factory. As far as the rig is concerned, uh, the shifter feels in a natural position for what I like. The handbrake feels where I, I would want it to be, much like I see in some rally cars or drift cars, how they have the handbrake really close to the steering wheel. I feel that I could go straight from the handbrake to the steering wheel without any sort of issue or feeling like I'm kind of exaggerating my movements to, uh, to get from one input to the other. So I really like how everything is laid out. Everything is really comfortable. 
and I get to use uh, the main part of the play seat challenge uh, where I could swing the steering wheel up out of the way for easier entrance and exit, which was a huge issue when a lot of my friends came over. They really didn't like to. They loved using the rig when they were in it, but they didn't like getting in or out of it. It was always uh, kind of a hard time for a lot of my friends. So um, made it a little safer of an experience for everybody. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have a play seat challenge or if you're looking for whatever type of rig you might want to do and you're kind of looking for ideas of how you could customize your rig, I hope I helped you uh, by showing you some of my ideas. Definitely uh, post some comments below on your rigs. I'm sure a lot, a lot of your rigs are a lot more impressive than mine. I am looking to upgrade my rig. We are looking to maybe next year sometime do a motion rig. I'm not exactly sure to go the DIY route uh, from like X Simulator. That form, that community is really huge or going with something like um, a Pro Sim U or a Next Level Motion platform. I'm really not exactly sure what direction we're going to be going yet, um, but you know, definitely stay tuned. Things are going to be changing a lot and very rapidly here. So as usual, I'm Crash, this is RTA Motorsports. Have a great day and see you all out on the track.